Today we're doing the binomial theorem. These, by the way, are binomials. Yes, there's two different, there's two terms, right? Um, uh, X and Y could be anything, right? It, like X could be uh, 3A squared and Y might be, I don't know, negative 2 times the square root of Z, right? It could be anything here. And you wouldn't write this as plus or minus, you would just have it as a minus, yeah? Right? And you raise that to some power and you want to know what is that? Is there a better way than just multiplying all this stuff out? Not just that. Like there's a lot of reasons why we want a general formula for this. That's what we're going to work on today. The, the binomial theorem is, is that what the general formula is. And we're going to prove that that general formula works. So again, x and y could be any numbers at all. And let's just go ahead and comp compute the first few cases. Because you'll notice I'm writing my n explicitly here, right? That I'm saying in the case where n equals 1, what we want is x plus y to the n. We want a general formula for that. Okay. And so I'm saying n, and we're going to, as we go down this way, we're going to have n is increasing. Starts off with n is 0. And so x plus y to the 0 equals 1, always, no matter what, right? Now what's x plus y to the first power? X plus y. It's just x plus y. Okay, x plus y. What's well, x plus y squared? X squared, x squared plus, plus, plus 2y. Uh, yes. Alright, x squared plus? 2y by x. I'm going to write it as x y. Y plus y plus y squared. Plus y squared. Now, one thing you're going to notice that when we do the next one, I'm going to keep this order Right Now, I could have written this in any order. It is true that this is equal to 2xy plus y squared plus x squared. That is true. But I want to write this in a specific order because we're going to see a pattern emerge here in a second. You'll notice that this has, uh, this in terms of x, it's descending powers. This is x to the first, x to the zeroth, right? I could have written this as x plus x zero y. And I could have written it actually like this. Right? Because y to the 0 is just 1. x to the 0 is just 1, right? And so this is one way you could think about it, that this is what happens. But you'll notice that when n is 1, you start with x to the 1, and then you go x to the 0. It starts with y to the 0 and goes up to y to the 1. Down here, we have it starts with x to the 2, x to the 1, and you know, x to the 0. And then the y's, on the other hand, move upwards. Right? You have y to the 0, y to the 1, y to the 2. Okay? Now here's something you may or may not know. If we just look at the coefficients, and I'm going to order the coefficients in the same way. We have 1. What's the coefficient here and here? 1 and 1. Then it's what? 1, one two. 2. Does this look familiar to anybody? Have you seen something like this before? I want to make this almost the same size here. Uh, one, I think if we got n equals three. One, one, two, one. Here's the thing. The outsides are always ones. And you get insides by adding these two together. Oh for me. This is no no no. This is called Pascal's triangle. And so let's just continue on and get a third row. And let's just by this rule that I said the outsides are always ones and we're making a triangle, so it needs to go out to put a 1 here and a 1 here. And now to get this one here, we're going to add those together to give me a what? 3. A 3. Add those together, and it gives me a 3. So my claim is that the coefficients for this next one, which will be n equals 3, x plus y now cubed, my claim is that the coefficients go 1, 3, 3, 1, and that it follows the same pattern. So it's going to start with x to what power? Uh, Zero. I uh, work. No, three. Three. <laughs> three, right? Right? OK. So this is my claim. And we're going to, like, I, I'm just going to write this up here. It should go x to the third plus, and now I'm just going to do the x's first. OK. I'm going to say, OK, if this pattern continues, we're going to have an x cubed. We're going to have an x squared. We're going to have an x, and then we're not going to have any x's. Now, the other way, the y's should increase. It starts with no y's. 
then we should have one y, then we should have a y squared, and finally have a y cubed. And the coefficients should be the same as these coefficients right here. It should go 1, 3, 3, 1. I claim that that's true. And you're going to see why that's true. Why this triangle does accurately predict these guys right here. And so the way we're going to do that, I'm just going to say, let's just do this. Let's say x plus y to the third. If I were to compute that, I could say this is the same thing as x plus y times x plus y quantity squared. Yeah? yeah. And that's probably how you would do it if I told you to compute this, because this one's easy to compute. Yeah. In, fact, I, in fact, you guys didn't even write anything down. I said, what is x plus y squared? And you told me squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now here's a cool thing, as long as you keep this in the order that I'm talking about where x has descending powers and the y's have ascending powers, then when you go to do your multiplication, and if you do what I'm about to do, then your result is going to have the same form. So let's first multiply the x through to each one of these, because this is like a double distribution, right? The x has to go into each one of these. And so when I do this, I get x to the third, third. plus 2x squared one. Yeah, plus then x y squared. Then x y squared. Now watch what happens. I'm going to do the same thing with the y. Now I'm going to distribute the y through, and it wouldn't make much sense to line that up right here because I, I know I'm going to add these things together. This is how we did this last year, and you'll notice that when you multiply that times that, you get the same sort of beast as this thing. It's an x squared and a y, right? And it's one of them. And so you get an x squared, y. Now you guys do the rest of them. What do I get when I multiply over here? 2xy squared. 2xy squared. And then y comes over and gives you a y cubed. y cubed. Now let's just add them up. We get 1x cubed. How many of these? 33x squared mm. y. And then 3xy squared. y squared plus plain old y cubed. Now you can kind of see why this y, this is the case, right? How did we get this? Well, you added those together. Which term was this? Well, since it's, since this is the third, well, I guess it's the fourth row, if you want to include the zeroth row. But it's the row where n equals three, and so it must start with x cubed, x squared, and so on. And so if you said, well, the x squared term is this one, and so it must have come from this one and this one. And you can see, yeah, indeed, that's where those guys got added together. This came from that right there, right, when we brought the y in. It's just that everybody got shifted. It's basically the same coefficients. They just got shifted over one. But you can see that, that where did this come from? It came from adding this one and the, those two coefficients together, which is indeed how that works. This one came from adding these two coefficients together, which was this and this, which is the same as that and that. And then the outsides are always one, because you're always going to have one guy left over, right? As long as you're just the, you have some polynomial in x and y, right? And it looks like this. The x term has a one in front of it. I'm sorry. The highest order x term has a one in front of it. The highest order y term has a one in front of it. So then, when you multiply 1x through, the new highest order of x, there's only one of them, right? <laughs> you can't, by multiplying this through, because you've ordered it in this way, you're not going to get another x term that's any bigger than that, right? Yeah. Ditto with the y. Since we've ordered it in this way, and that y is that just one by himself, like he was here, like he was here, and like he was here, when you bring in one more value of y, that is the highest order y term and there's no other one that's going to give you that, right? Because you're not then going to multiply by y squared or anything like that. You're just doing this every time. Everybody buy that? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense why it does that? So, so, really what we could do then, if you're so inclined, if you wanted to compute, say, I want to know what this one is, when n equals 4, Let's just say my, I had some problem I'm working on and I needed to figure out what is x plus y to the fourth. You could just write this triangle out and then say, well, let's see, the next row would be one. You finish this up for me. What would this four, be? Four, four, four six, uh -huh. four, one. And one would be out there. And so I could just say, okay, then 
the x starts at what power? Four. X to the four, and then I'm gonna get a plus x to the what? Q. Q. And then uh, some squared. stuff plus x to the what? Squared. And then plus x to x. the what? One. Just x. And then y to the then it, yeah, and so now let's do the y's. The y's start at y to the zero. So he's by himself. As we've seen, the x's are always, the first one's always by himself. So then we have y to the first power, y squared, y cubed, y to the fourth. And now I can just plug these guys in. And I have one, four, six, four, one. So one, four, six, four, one. And if you want, you go ahead and, and figure that out. You can just take this guy, multiply him by x plus y, just like we just did, and you'll see that, yeah, this will, this will work. The problem is, like, what if you're trying to compute x plus y to the 17th? You'd have to write a lot of these, and you'd, be in, you'd end up doing a ton of additions. In fact, you could figure out how many additions you'd have to do, but anyway, right? And, like, and what if you don't really need all of the terms? What if you just needed to know what is it for, let's say, the x to the, well, how about when y is 7 and then x is like 10? I think that's what it should be. What if you just needed that one? Well, then it doesn't make sense that you'd want to do this entire thing. Right? And what if, and here's more to the point, what if you wanted to know what this is itself? Because, and very soon, we are going to want to, it won't be x and y, it'll be something plus something else, raised to the nth power. And if we had some kind of formula for it, if we could write out what this thing is, then it would make our lives easy and we could prove something actually very, very, very important before we move on. And so, we're in luck, because there is a formula for it. And that's what we're going to do today. That formula is called the binomial theorem. I'm not going to write it up just yet. I want to give myself a little bit more room. We're not going to use him right now. But you see this pattern here. Okay? And this is, oops. This is, uh, this, this pattern, it, it seems like it should hold, but we, we don't know that it does. Again, this is kind of like, you plug it, yeah, you plugged in one into sine and it was positive. You plug in two into sine. It's positive. You plug in three into sign. It's still positive. Does the pattern continue forever? Well, no. That In that case, it doesn't. This, the pattern holds. Does the pattern continue forever? <laughs> Another thing, though, it would be nice if we had some kind of function that told it. That way, like, <laughs> and this is the thing. This is not how one finds what those are in the case where x plus y raised to the nth power. You don't use this. It would be nice if there were some function which told us what it was. Actually, what I'm going to do here, I want to kind of color code this. So the ends I'm going to do in blue. And you'll notice there's more going on here. It's not, we, we, we're not just, there, there's more places here for things. Because if I want to say, what's this coefficient, I can't just say, what's well, the coefficient when n equals 3? We have to talk about which term you're talking about, right? Like, if I want that coefficient right there, it's not just, you can't just say, what's the coefficient when n equals 2? Well, there's, there's 1, 2, 3 terms there. So we're going to need yet another variable. I'm going to introduce another variable. And let's, just in this case here, when n equals 3, we get this row. And now for each one of these terms, I'm going to say this is when k is equal to 0. This is when k is equal to 1. This is when k is equal to 2. And this is when k is equal to 3. So we're going to be talking about anywhere along this triangle or anywhere along these, we want to know the coefficient. And now we can give you coordinates for it. I could say n when n equals 3 and k equals 1, then we're talking about this guy right here. When n equals 2 and k equals 2, I guess we would be at this one, right? Because we're going to start here with a 0, a 1, and a 2. OK? Everybody with me on that? Yeah. And yes, I'm using n and k. There's a reason that I'm using these. But here's the idea. Is we want 
a function. So that when I give it an n and a k, in other words, now it has two inputs here. I want to be able to give it an n. I want to be able to give it a k. And what I want it to give me back as an output is the binomial coefficient. At in k, right? If we're thinking about this for like this triangle, and I want to describe where are you in this triangle? Well, n would be the row here, and k would be this guy right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Turns out there is such a function. And it's written like this. Yep. And it's called, if you, if you, if you write it like that, it's called n choose k. Now, I'm going to stop for a second. <clears throat> This was very hard. Before I write the actual formula, because there is an actual formula for it, and we're going to use it to compute and verify that these are true. Um, this was very hard for me. I had to make a big decision, because normally I don't like to just throw something up here. I'm like, here's a formula for this function. And so it was like, well, do we actually go into, like, it's two sections. For This is section 10.5. It's in 10.7 where they introduced this thing. And it was like, can we just jump to 10.7? Well, no, because the stuff in 10.7, we need 10.6. And it's like, do we want to do 10.6 and 10.7 and then come back to this? And it was a very hard, it was a very hard choice for me. Um, I decided against it because what we're about to do is, a, is an induction proof. And if we went and did those other two sections, it would be probably a week and a half or two weeks. Then we'd come back and do induction. And it's like, since we have induction fresh in our minds, Let's just jump in and do it, okay? And this is also the order that the book takes. The book doesn't, the book is just like throws this at you. It's like, here's the formula, and I hate that, okay? Um, so I'm sorry, there's no, re there's no real good way about it, and I just chose to do it this way. So here's the formula. N phi factorial. You guys remember what n factorial means? What is n factorial? Like, or if I said, oh, well, better yet, what's 5 factorial? 5 times 4 times 3 times yeah, 2. There you go, right, times 2 times 1. So n factorial would be, well, you take whatever n is, you multiply it by n minus 1, then by n minus 2, all the way down until you get to 3 times 2 times 1, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so it's n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now right now, now we're going to go into this, don't worry. But right now this looks like magic and I just pulled it out of midair, right? And there, this, there's actually, in a completely different context, we're going to be talking about something completely different in a couple sections from now that has nothing to do with binomials. It turns out that there's a very good explanation for what this is. Like there's, this is something that we will derive this formula for something completely different from this. And this is one of those things. I actually don't know how someone, fig like who the first person was who figured out that this works for these here. Um, but that's often how it works in math. Like you, you have somebody who's been working on in a completely different thing, something called combinatorics, which is a fancy way of counting things. And this does have to do with choosing a number of things out of things. So if you have n things and you want to choose four things out of them, this would be how many ways you could do that. That's what this, that's what this is. Um, and we're going to, yeah, we're going to, that's why it has this weird name, n choose k. And it's usually n and k. Your book, when it introduces it, will have n choose r. It's never that. It's always n choose k. And that's why I'm using these letters right now. Um, but the, the point is, like, then at some point, somebody figured out, was like, hey, you know, this works in here. The, that this is the n, the n choose k thing. This is, so I guess this would be the three choose one. That's how we would compute that. Let's just do that. Let's just see if it works. And in fact, I want to, I want to do this for a lot of them here. Um, first, now there's one more thing you need to know. Because you notice that there's zeros in here. And so if you were to plug a zero into here, you, you're going to end up with a zero factorial. What's zero factorial? Zero. You'd think so, right? 
Like, that would make sense. Is it You'd think so. One. It's one. Why? It's kind of like one. It's, yeah, it's one, it's one of those things. And actually, we're, we're going to talk about this later. But there is, there, so usually the way that this is justified is they'll say, well, we'll just define it this way. We're just going to define zero, the zero factorial is defined as one. And you say, why is that? Well, this also has something to do with the ways you can arrange something. And you say, how many ways can you arrange nothing? And you'd say, well, zero ways. And then your teacher says, no, there's one way to arrange nothing. And it's you don't arrange it. And it's like, what a stupid, and it seems like a big cop out. But there's actually, there's something, and we'll go into this a little bit later. I'll just tell you about it. I'll tease it. But there is a very good reason why this has to be one. And it, it's, it's a really good reason. And it has nothing to do with, well, the number of ways you could arrange nothing is one. And it's nothing like that. It actually, there's, there, it must be, zero factorial has to be one for math to work. But anyway, <laughs> and so zero factorial is one. So let's do some calculations here. Here's n choose k. Let's do zero choose zero, because that's what, uh, that's what I'm claiming should be this guy. This coefficient right there, it's 1. It should be that I take the n, which is 0, and I didn't write them up there, but the k in this case is 1, because the first one is, all, I'm sorry, the k in this yeah. case is 0. That k is always going to be, this first thing is always going to be 0. So 0 choose 0. I'm just going to plug it in, 0 factorial over 0 factorial minus 0 minus 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1. 0 factorial is 1. What's 0 minus 0? What's zero minus zero? Zero. What's, and so that's zero factorial, which is? And what's one divided by one? Okay. Okay. One. So what would this be? So I'm, I want n choose k for this one right here. It would be one factorial. Well, 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 one choose what? Oh, one choose one, two, one. It always starts, well, K starts always starts, starts zero. with zero. Zero. Okay. It really goes up. And so one factorial over zero factorial, one minus zero factorial. That's just a one over a one times one minus zero is one. Factorial is one. It's just one. So yeah, it agrees. Oh. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because the K, I didn't write them in. Now it'll be easy because the K's are red. The ends are blue, so now I'm going to ask you, you have, about this guy. You have to do two separate ones for each term. Say again? Like you have to do one zero to get coefficient for x and then one one to get... Yeah, these are not, this is not k equals one, k equals two, three, four, five, six. In each one, yes, yes. This is kind of like a grid, if you want to think about it this way. Like, here's your ends, right? Your ends go zero, one, two, three. And now it's just we've ordered them weird. But the k's, if I wanted to order them, right, we could order them where here's k is 0. So this one's n down here. Here's k up here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then that first one would be here. This would be x plus y. This would be x squared plus xy, 2xy plus, and so on, right? Like if I were ordering, I would just I'd, I'd flatten everybody, right, and put all the zeros in line. Put all the ones in line, put all the twos in line, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Everybody get that? Yeah. X squared Y. And so on. I just push everybody forward. And so, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's do a, let's do a few more. And okay. Let's do this entire row. So this coefficient should be what choose what? Uh, two, two, two choose one. Two choose two zero. zero, which is two factorial over? Uh, zero, zero factorial times two, factorial. two minus zero factorial. Yeah. Which is two factorial over, well that's just a one. What's two minus zero? Two. two. So two factorial is one. Is that that coefficient? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do the next one. This would be two choose. So the next one over here. It's two choose. One. One, which is. Um, 
two factorial to one for factorial one turns two minus one. Factorial. So that's two. two factorial over one times one, which is two times one over one, which is two. Is that that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna compute two more. I just want to do these two and verify those. Then I'm going to show you a cool little fact about how all of these are always one. Okay, so let's compute this one. This would be what choose what? This one right here. Three, three choose one. one. Three choose one is... Three factorial over, over one factorial times three, three, minus three, minus one. three minus one. Three minus one factorial. So that's three times two times one. One factorial is just one. This is two factorial. Yeah, there's two, which is so two times one. And then there's the one that I'm not writing. Does that come out to three? Is that three? Yeah. Okay, let's do the next one over. Three choose. What's that one? Two. Which is? Three factorial over two factorial times three minus two. Factorial. So we have three times two times one. 2 times 1, and then 3 minus 2 is 1, yeah, which is factorial one. is just 1, and, and so... This is 6 over... Now, you'll notice whenever... And I'm just going to cancel. You, like, you can see how much stuff will cancel when you're, when you're doing something, choose something else. It's, it's much easier to do that kind of thing. Okay? And, um... To try to do those cancellations, like for instance, like and let's say you're doing some stuff, and what you end up with is this: n plus two factorial over n factorial. You'll notice n plus two factorial is n plus two times n plus one times n times n minus one, all the way down to two times one. n factorial is n times n minus one times all the way down to two times one. You'll notice a lot of this stuff cancels. This is part of your homework. You're going to have to compute stuff like this, and you could, I mean, you don't have to write it all out if you could just see, like, oh, yeah, there should just be two terms left in the top, because that's two more. So that should just be n plus 2 times n plus 1, and all of the n's down here cancel with all the n's in the top, and that's why you end up with them. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now here's a cool thing, and I want to go ahead, we could compute. 1 choose 0, 2 choose 0, and 3 choose 0, and verify that they're all 1. We could choose, we could do 1 choose 1, 2 choose 2, 3 choose 3, and prove that they're all 1. Or I could just say, what happens when you do n choose 0, where n is any number? n choose 0. What is that? n factorial over 0 factorial times n minus 0 factorial. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, right? And so you have n. Don't bother with that because he's equal to 1. n minus 0 is just n. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool. So what about n choose itself, right? So now notice the last bit right here, it would be 2 choose 2. 3 choose 3, which is also, by the way, this is why it's defined this way. Like, and this is why I've decided to index these guys with zeros first instead of ones first. Yeah. Okay. So, n choose n. So, in other words, 1 choose 1, 2 choose 2, 3 choose 3, 3, 4 choose 4, 5 choose all of them. n choose n is equal to? n factorial. Over? n factorial times, times n minus n factorial. So that's n factorial over n factorial times 0 factorial, which is 1. And so that's n, it's n over n, which is 1. Not 1, it's just 1. Well, 1 is equal to 1. So, okay, I'm sorry, I have to do that. So n factorial over yeah, And so that's why, and you'll notice that, okay, so the pattern is working. We're always getting ones out here where we know we should. And that's because of this nifty fact right here. It doesn't matter how big n is. When you do n choose 0, you end up with 1. Wow. n choose n. It could be a billion over. It could be a billion choose a billion. And that's kind of like 
and if you think about it, how like what this is asking is how many ways are there to choose n things out of n things? There's one way. You choose all of them. How many ways are there to choose zero things out of n things? Well, one. You don't choose them, right? And so it kind of makes sense. And we'll see that when we do this and again. Like I really very hard for me to jump into this without like deriving that thing first. But that's that's just how we're gonna have to do it this time. Okay, so now as far so we're gonna do a proof. This is gonna take so long. <laughs> so long. Look at all this that we have to do. So but I want I want to notice a few things first. So what we just showed here, and I think we did it for this, this, and this, all of these other ones we showed. But these are all equal, and so I'm going to just go ahead and replace them. This is 0 choose 0. This is 1 choose 0. This is 1 choose 1. This is 2 choose 0. This is 2 choose 1. And this is 2 choose 2. This is 3 choose 0. This is 3 choose 1. This is 3 choose 2. And this is 3, choose 3. We've shown that all of these are, are these. Yeah? Because yeah. we did these in the middle, and then we showed that all of the anything choose 0 and, and anything choose itself are always 1. So now we've done this. You'll notice what I've just proven is not just the base case, but like we went way beyond the base case here, okay? And I haven't even said like what we're proving, so, but I think you can anticipate what's about to happen. And like, We've just annihilated the base case, okay? So we're not gonna do a base case in this proof, okay? Because it's done. Like, we've showed that this pattern works. But what's the pattern that we're trying to prove, okay? And this is where we need to be really explicit here, because this is my claim, is that we notice that we have ascending power, that in every one of these lines, we have ascending powers of Y, descending powers of X. We notice that the, the, that, that, that each one of these, if you want to find the whatever coefficient, you do it with whatever cho n choose k is the coefficient. So here's the statement of the binomial theorem. It's that x plus y, for any numbers x and y, raised to the nth power is equal to n choose 0 x to the n plus. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write one more. That would be n choose 1, x to the n minus 1, y, and so on and so forth, up to, I'm going to talk about why I'm including this one in just a second. Here's something to notice. You notice how k always corresponds to the power of y? Yeah. Right? This is when k is equal to 0, the y power is 0. When k is equal to 1, the y power is 1. When k is equal to 2, the y power is 2. Oh, nice. And so if this is n and k choose k minus 1, this would be y to the k minus 1. K minus 1. And that means that x, and this is the formula, right? It, it goes down with 1. This is x to the n. x to the n minus 1. This would be x to the k minus n minus k minus 1. Yeah? Okay. yeah? So the next one would be n choose k, which is the one we really care about. n minus k, y to the k, plus all the way up to n choose n, y to the n. So everybody see the pattern, right? Yeah. Like that. this is the pattern I've been describing. The x's descend in power, and finally run out on the last one, okay? The y's ascend in power, starting with y to the 0. The y's also correspond, the power of the y's correspond to the k value. Okay, and this is stuff we've, all, we've already observed up here. And then the way to get the coefficient is with n choose k. This is what we want to prove. This is, this is the statement of the binomial theorem. This is the theorem. That's the binomial, that's the binomial theorem. That's what we want to prove. But there's a lot going on that we need to prove. And so, to do our proof, 
First off, base case is done. <laughs> okay, then it has this form. Every single one of them has this form. It fits into this base case taken care of. Okay, so then but here's here's what we need to do. One, we're going to verify that the first and last terms. the coefficient equals 1. Okay, because that's what we saw. That was the pattern, right? And that's what this should be. If n choose 0 is 1, n choose n is 1, then that pattern continues. We're going to need to verify that. 2. We're going to need to verify that the powers of x and y ascend and descend, as we've said like now five times, right? We're going to need to verify that that happens. Finally, and this is the hard part, we need to verify the k coefficient. Because really, all we need to do, we need to verify every single coefficient. Like if we wanted to do this right, we would need to verify every single one. So what we're going to do is kind of a hack. We're going to say if we verify that in the end when we take the next step here that the first one is equal to 1, the last one is equal to 1, then we're going to say then suppose that k is any other ones in the middle. Okay. So we're going to say we're going to show that it's true when k equals 0. We're going to show it's true when k equals to n plus 1. Sorry about this. This is this is okay. And then we're going to show that it's true for all of, so in other words, just a general, this is what I mean by the kth coefficient. So that we got this, we're going to nail this coefficient. We're going to nail this coefficient. Then I'm just kind of saying, well, if k is any other of these, then, 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 then we will have verified that all of them are, is, is it has that formula. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm also going to completely do what I told you never to do with the induction proof. Um, and that's, I'm not, we're going to do induction on n. We are not going to introduce a new k here. Because we're going to need, because if you notice, there's two variables going on here, right? Like, n is changing, and for every time n changes, there's another k. So it's like, and this thing is called n choose k. So it's like, again, I could have introduced a new variable and said, we'll do induction on m. Or I could have said, well, okay, we'll do induction on k, but then this thing that we call in choose k, I'm using k in a different context, so it's like, just, just, this is why I'm not assigning this for homework, because there's a lot going on here. And so, so, okay, questions before we actually jump into this. Okay, so again, base step, done, <laughs> like, way done. This formula works in every single one of these cases. So yes, base step done. Okay. Um, now here's the inductive step. Again, we're doing induction on n. So I need to show that this pattern works for n plus 1. Right? Because this is the thing that's changing every time. We verified the case when n is 0. We verified the case when n is 1. We verified the case when n is 2. We verified the case when n is 3. Now we're supposing it's true when n is n. And we must show that x plus y to the n plus 1. This is what, this is what we must show here. Must show that that has this formula. Now, if I'm replacing every n with n plus 1, what should the first thing be? n plus 1. n plus 1 choose Zero. Zero. times x to the n plus, one. n plus 1. Plus, now we don't need these, but there's something to notice. We will want these guys here. You'll see why. And so if I'm replacing this, n plus 1, n plus one choose k minus 1. Actually, we don't even need to show that, because all I said, we just need to verify the kth coefficient. So forget about him for a second. You'll see why I, I, I brought him in in the first place. This is something I meant to say a minute ago, and I didn't, because I'm trying to, trying to go faster. 
trying to get, I'm out over my skis here. Since we only need to verify the kth one, because it could be any one that's in the middle, let's just write one of them. And instead of n choose k, it should be what? Choose what? n plus, n plus one, one choose k. One choose k. And then since that has k, y should have power what? K. But x should be to the power what? N plus n one minus one. N plus one minus, good, good. N plus one minus k. That's what it needs to have. This is what we must show here. We have to show, get, assuming that this is true, show that this is true. Plus all the way up to n choose, or what choose what? N, n choose one. n. Oh, n plus 1, choose n plus 1. Uh, y to the? n plus 1. Yes, that's what we want, right? Because if this thing has this pattern, then we verified the pattern. Again, as long as we verify that we have the ascending, descending, we verified that the first and the last terms have coefficient 1, because that's 1, right? That's 1. I don't care what n is, that's equal to 1. That's equal to 1. So as long as we show that those coefficients are 1, it will have this pattern. If we verify the ascending and descending powers, and we verify that this thing is that right there. Okay. In fact, I'm going to say verify that the kth coefficient is this right here. n plus 1 choose k. That's what we need to show. That's going to be the hard part, because the rest of this won't be too bad. Okay, everybody with me? I'm going to get rid of this, this thing that we're trying to show. And we're, then we're just going to show it, okay? So that's what we must show, so let's do it, okay? We must show all that stuff, so let's actually get to brass tacks here. This is equal to x plus y times x plus y to the n, yeah? yeah? And by the inductive hypothesis, this thing is equal to that thing right there, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to replace that. Right now. So, and I'm not going to, because I don't have enough space, I'm not going to write by the inductive hypothesis and then write the next thing and then do all that. But what I'm doing right now is telling you, by the inductive hypothesis, this is equal to, oh boy, n choose 0 x to the n plus all the way up to, and notice I left him, because we're not going to need him. You'll see in a second. n choose k minus 1 x to the n minus k minus 1. Now, let's stop right here for a second. n minus k minus 1 is the same thing as n minus k plus 1, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to rewrite it right now. Can I do that? Everybody okay with that? Okay. n minus k plus 1, okay? Plus, this is n choose k, x to the n minus k, y to the k, plus all the way up to n choose n, y to the n. That's the inductive hypothesis. That's what we're assuming is true. So for instance, if n were equal to 3, then we'd, have, we'd just have written this thing down right there. That's it. Now if you notice why I'm, I, wrote, I included these two in particular, is that, let's just take in this case here. If we're not on this one, and we're not on this one, then each one of these that are in the middle came from two of these. And if here k is equal to 1, then we obtained that coefficient by adding this one and this one, so where k was equal to 1 and the 1 before it. If we're interested in this coefficient, where k is equal to 2, we care about the previous case where k was equal to 2 or the 1 before it. And so that's why I'm saying, because we're interested in the kth coefficient. So in order for that to work out, we're going to need the one that is also k, right? k is 2, you want k is 2. k is 1, you want k is 1. But you also want the one before it. So that's why I'm not just, I'm not just magically saying, like, oh, let's just add these two, and then it's just all going to work out. I planned this ahead of time, because I noticed the pattern here, okay? And that's basically what all this is about, isn't it? I think it should, it should fit the pattern, hopefully. And if I did it wrong like I did the first time I ever tried this, I did it the other way, <laughs> you get to the point and go, that's not what I wanted. And then you have to do it again, okay? So I'm hiding a lot. There's a lot hidden under the rug here. <laughs> like, like I'm not, you know, like I practiced this, okay? 
So let's just do it, right? Let's, let's multiply this guy out. So the x comes in here and we get n choose 0, x now gets raised to the what power? n plus 1. Uh-huh. It increases by 1. Oh, that's good. That's what we want. And then he comes in and does all these and hits all these. And then finally hits this guy and gives us what? And, well, first off, here's the coefficient, whatever it happens to be. x to the? n minus k plus 2. Yeah, that's how I would write it. Or you could write n minus k plus 1 plus 1. But, yeah. And then does the y bit change at all? No. No, it stays the same. Which is, you'll notice, this is exactly what we did to derive this guy. This is all we're doing. We're not doing anything different. Okay. N choose K. X to the? N minus K plus 1. Ah. Ah, yeah, that's, that's what we want. Okay, and then does the Y change? No. Okay. All the way up to what? Um, N choose N times X times Y to the end. Yeah, good. I almost just wrote Y to the end. I was like, the Y doesn't change. Yeah, you're right. The X just does what we're doing. Okay. Now, and remember when we did this before, right? When we did this, I, I wrote all of these under the thing, and then I shifted everybody over by one, yeah. and everybody just magically ended up working. It's going to work the same way. <laughs> so let's make the y come in, and I get a n choose 0 y times x to the n, all the way down to... Now, here's the thing. I notice... Since everybody's shifting over by one, I'm going to go ahead and line him up here, and hopefully, hopefully everybody will work out. I think he will. I think he will. So I multiply the y through here, and I get what? Uh, x, y, well, the the and coefficient, and right, which is k minus n one. K minus one. And then does the does the x change? No. no. N x. minus k plus one. And then y to the just can't oh yeah, and hey, oh, it worked. Oh, yeah. Just like before when I shifted everybody over by one. Uh, hey, it magically works. And if I'd set this up wrong at the beginning, I would have seen right now like, oh, it didn't work. And I'd have more work to do, okay? Now, I really don't need to do the next one, but we'll do it anyway. I multiply the y through right here and I get what? I get the k plus. Well, the and choose all, all k the other times stuff. x to the n minus k times y to the k plus one. Plus one is, and that's one we don't care about. And we go all the way out to now we care about this. What do we get here? N two then times y to the n plus one. N plus one. Yeah. Now, we're going to add everybody up. And one thing I'm going to not do is care about any of these other terms. I don't care about him. Don't care about him. I do care about him. We have n choose zero, x to the n plus one. We have all those others. Because remember, like I said, we're verifying the outermost ones, and then we're just going to verify the kth one. And the thing is that k is going to be either 1, 2, 3, 4, or all the way up to the one before the last one. So as long as it, this formula works, in other words, I'm verifying that when I add these two, we get that one. I'm verifying that when I add these two, I get that one, and it doesn't matter which one you actually do, right? Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't say k has to be 7 here. I said k could have been any of them. Right. Yeah. And so that's the one I want. And notice that the one that I care about, this coefficient right here, it's the one with the y is the k. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Because the k corresponds to the 2. So when k equals 1, y, the y is to the first. k equals 2, y is to the second. When y is to the k, then you are on the kth term. Okay? And so that's the only one I care about. And so what we're going to end up with is whatever that plus that is. So whatever n choose k plus n choose k minus 1. Whatever that happens to be. That's my new coefficient. Before it was 2 plus 1 and you got 3, right? And here it was 2 plus 1 and you got 3. Here it's whatever those two things are. You add them together and you get this. And then this is x to the n minus k plus 1 y to the k plus all the way up to the last one which was n choose n y to the k plus 1. Now let's just verify. Let's verify number two. Do we have ascending and descending terms? Yes. 
like the way that it's supposed to. Yeah, how could it not be, <laughs> right? Because that was the assumption. You multiplied by x and brought everybody over. You multiplied by y and brought everybody over this way. You add everybody up, and it should have this pattern that we saw before. Okay, I, that's as good as good. We could be very rigorous about this if we want. I don't want to be. I think that's perfectly good. Now, let's verify that the first and the last terms are 1. Uh, here's the thing that we got. What's n choose 0? Is n choose 0 the same thing as n plus 1 choose 0? Yeah. Yeah, so I could actually rewrite this if I wanted to as n plus 1 choose 0, and I'm not lying to you, am I? That's true. Because n plus 1 choose 0 is 1. Is n choose n, what's n choose n? One. We already, we already proved that. So n, plus so n plus 1 choose n plus 1, is that also 1? Yes. Boom! Done. Now, the only thing that's left to do. So, it's following the pattern. Remember a minute ago I said must show, and this is what I wrote. The only thing that we don't have thus far is that this thing needs to be equal to that thing right there. Because if it is equal to that thing, then we have the pattern. We've shown that the pattern, that this pattern, implies that it works in the next case, which is n plus 1. And therefore, it's true forever and for always, for all values of n. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that we've shown all these things, and the only thing left to do is verify that that is equal to that? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of everything okay. in the middle here, okay? So there's only one thing left to do, and that's verify. Because the pattern, we've shown that the pattern continues. It, it is expected. You start with n plus 1, choose 0, x to the n plus 1, though things decrease. Da, 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 da. Now we just need to show that that is equal to, and I'm going to write this a bit bigger. Want to show that this is equal, we want what I'm going to write over here to be equal to n plus 1, choose k. Because that's the kth coefficient. That's what we want. So let's start over here. n choose k plus n choose k minus 1. So remember, this is what we've just done, right? If we wanted to find this one, you would have said, well, k is equal to 1, so that would be 2 choose 1 in the previous one. And then you'd have 2 choose 0. So that's what you're adding together, right? Those two coefficients to get that one. Okay? Everybody with me? Yeah. yeah that's what we're doing? Okay. So, n choose k is what? Uh, n factorial okay. over k, k, k factorial, factorial times n, n minus k, k factorial. factorial. I love that you guys said that together. That's awesome. <laughs> now, what is n choose k minus 1? n factorial over k minus 1. Yeah, k minus 1 factorial. n minus k minus 1 factorial. Now, I'm going to rewrite it. N mi so that's how I want to write this, is n minus k plus 1, right there. Okay, now here's the thing. We don't quite have a common denominator, do we? Now, let's just take a step here. And let's just say I had this thing. I was trying to add these two numbers together. One thing I could do is say, well, if I multiply this side by 4 factorial and I multiply this guy by 5 factorial, but that would be overkill. That would be way overkill. You don't need to do that. In fact, you're only missing one number. Oh, right five. Here. Yeah, right? Because if you just multiply the top and bottom just by 5, yeah. well, what is 4 factorial times 5? Perfect. It's 5 factorial, right? So we don't need to go above and beyond. It's kind of like, you know, I think last year I had some example where you have like 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12. You could, if you, if you really wanted to, you could multiply top and bottom by 4 and top and bottom by 12. Or you could say, well, you're just missing a 3 over here, right? So that's what we're doing here. We don't want to go overkill. And, and make this denomin denominator crazy. So what am I missing? What, what does this one have that this is missing one of? A K, right? Yeah, since there's K factorial, if I multiply this guy by K, then I have K factorial. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. In fact, let me give myself a little bit more room. I'm going to rewrite this. Plus. 
across and we'll do it right here. So this one was k minus 1 factorial, and then we said that was n minus k plus 1 factorial, and we had an n factorial on top. Okay, so I'm missing what over here again? K. Just 1k, and that's it, right? Because if I just multiply that by k, now it turns out that that is k factorial, yeah? Yeah. That what thing is... Point, say what? What about the plus? Well, yeah, and so now, because we're not done over here, and so... What do I need over here that this one has? K minus one. We need a one. A K minus one thing. <laughs> so this is, this is, always messes me up, and it's only because I've worked with this so much that I can see what we're missing. It's it's actually quite hard to see because let's just think about this. N minus K is just some number. Let's say it's five. This is five plus one. This is just five. Right, because if n minus k is equal to just 5, so then your n minus k factorial is just 5 factorial. But your n minus k plus 1 would just be 6, right? So then what you're actually missing is the this one term, n minus k plus 1. There's another way of seeing it, because I'm not hearing you guys go, oh, is that if I wanted to compute n minus k, <clears throat> plus 1 factorial, I would say, well, you take whatever n minus k plus 1 is, and then the next one down would be what you get when you subtract off of 1, which would be n minus k, and then n minus k minus 1, n minus, and so on and so forth. So this is the only bit that you're missing over here. Yeah. Right? So if I multiply the top and the bottom by n minus k plus 1, yeah, see, that's so so difficult. How much time do we have? Oh, we are right right at the end of time. So we're, we are going to get through this. This will be nice. Okay, so everybody got that? Everybody believe that? All I did is I took denominators and, yeah. and multiplied top and bottom by whatever the one number that was missing. And I confess that when I first worked this out, because I knew we were about to do this until like a week or two ago, I was like, eh, let me just find out how I'm going to do this proof. I did it the hard way, and I totally <laughs> multiplied by the entire denominators. It took me forever to simplify. And then I thought, wait, wait a minute. This is the same thing as n minus k plus 1 factorial, yeah? yeah? This is the same thing as k factorial. So we do have now a common denominator. And so this is n factorial times n minus k plus 1. This is k times n factorial. There's a big glaring thing that I can factor out of here. N factorial. Let's do n factorial. And what does that leave me with? Okay, so we have a k factorial. N minus k plus 1 factorial. So what's left? We have an n minus k plus 1. N minus k plus 1. And then we have a plus k. K's go away. The k's go away. And now I have, this is the same thing as n factorial times n plus 1 over k factorial n minus k plus 1 factorial. This is, is what is this the same thing as? Please get rid of n plus, n 1, plus 1 factorial. n plus 1 factorial. This is k factorial. Now, we want this thing to be equal to n plus 1 choose k. So what does that need to be equal to? What is, what is, here we go, oh. what is n plus 1 choose k? n Just, plus 1 oh. factorial. n plus 1 factorial. k factorial times n plus 1 minus, minus k factorial. Is that that? Oh. It is! Yeah. Look at that. That is n plus 1 minus k. And I don't, when I first did this, like years and years and years ago, I sat there going, well, how am I supposed to turn that into that? It's not the same thing, and it totally is. <laughs> this is just n plus one. Oh, and we didn't we didn't do with the the actual coefficients worked out that way too. We had x to the n minus k plus one, y to the n. To fit the formula, it was supposed to be n plus one minus k. That is n plus one minus k. The same way that's n plus one minus k. So this is indeed n plus one choose k, which is what we wanted to show. Now we verified that the kth coefficient is that thing. It is that thing. And so we've proved the thing. Yay.
Oh man, I can't believe we actually got through it. Um, and so, this, I'm going to conclude, therefore, therefore, and watch, watch this, this is slick. This is so slick. And this is, I want you to commit this to memory for the rest of your lives. Voos. We need more Voos. X plus Y raised to the nth power, where N is any number, zero or bigger, is equal to the sum. As K goes from zero up to N of N choose K times X to the N minus K, Y to the K. You notice all I did is I just rewrote it in nifty summation notation. This right here will be so helpful when we go to prove something that we absolutely need to prove before we do calculus. As far as I'm concerned, I think it needs to be proved. Um, and so, yeah, that is the binomial theorem in summation form. Okay, super, super. Now we will talk a little bit more about this. There's a few more things that um, I want to do with it before, uh, yeah, so, but that's, that's all we got for today. We've proved it. There, loose, there, boom, take it to the bank. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.